so today I'm talking about airbrushes so I have two um, they're both the same model these are both made by Harder and Steenbeck um, they are their base models these are ultras however what I've done is just to do a little upgrade on them I changed the um, solid air caps which come with them to a two-part one which is from another airbrush in their range that happens as fits these really really well um, it just enables me to um, pinch out when I get some dry tip and that's the only modification I've made now I have just serviced these and I thought I had um, filmed it but when I went to check it hadn't filmed so what I'm going to do is show you how to break down these airbrushes. The principle will be the same for whatever brand of airbrush you, you have. Um, now, these airbrushes, I work in a workshop and these airbrushes are used when I'm doing backgrounds on paintings, on canvas and also for some of the wood art that I do and they're also used um, by Andy uh, sometimes for doing a bit of airbrushing applying stains mainly stains and acrylic paints are used in these uh, this one's a 0.2 mil needle and nozzle and that's my detailer so for doing detailed work that's the one I use this one is a 0.4 millimeter and so thicker needle uh, thicker nozzle uh, well larger nozzle and uh, I use a, a larger cup on that's a 0.5 uh, mil cup that's a 2 mil and this is used for when we need to um, sort of cover more on the on the wood the bowls um, and the canvases so that's sort of uh, when you're trying to trying to get paint down basically so what I'm going to do is to show you in general what I do and how I strip down in between um, uses so if I've been spraying all day um, what I do is a, a quick clean down ready for the next time and I'll also show you what to look out for if you're doing a service so I'll just put those aside a moment carefully let's preserve the needles okay so let's just move that pot aside so this is my main sort of cleaning kit if you like I have a bowl um, some pipettes the bowl is for soaking the main body and for soaking the air cap and maybe for soaking the um, paint cup the, the my ones are gravity fed uh, I know a lot of wood turners use siphon feed absolutely nothing wrong with them um, it's just that I've had my airbrushes now well one I've had five years one I've had two years and because of the way I use an airbrush uh, the gravity feed are, are a better choice for me however if you are just spraying with a set amount of colors then I can quite see the logic of having a siphon feed however cleaning down should be done regularly on either system just for ease of spraying ease of use so what I tend to have I have a little mat um, this one actually came uh, just with a cleaning kit um, but it's actually quite useful just to have either a microfiber cloth or um, a bit of toweling or a dishcloth or a tea towel, just something. I'll tell you for why. When you're undoing airbrushes, so many little bits and if they hit a hard surface, they just fly off all over the place. And trust me, trying to look for a tiny little spring on a workshop floor it's no fun and especially now when there's sawdust dust etc no it's just not fun so put something like that down and it will just stop the bounces 
and stop things flying off all over the place. Uh, right, so those are the nozzles I say that I used to have. Um, handy things to have, not necessarily a must have, but they're just handy. Have a pair of pliers to hand, a rubber glove. You can wear rubber gloves if you're cleaning down. I prefer not to, but I do have a rubber glove and I'll show you for why in a minute. Um, I've got some forceps, they're handy brushes uh, these are actually airbrush cleaning brushes they're like little um, bottle brushes if you like kind of principle if you don't want to spend out on getting some of these go to your local chemist uh, where else farm chemist pharmacy dentist uh, wherever they sell dental supplies toothbrushes toothpaste etc and Buy yourself some interdental brushes. They're sort of, well, they come in various sizes, but they're just as pliable as these and they do just as good a job. So that's a little thing for you. Um, I'll say I've got several of these brushes. I also have, this is actually an old needle. Um, it's, 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 I think it's reacted with some solvent or something. It was a cheaper needle. This is um, what I'm trying to explain. Cheaper needle that has seen better days. I just put a bend in it so that I know that that's the, can the sort of skanky needle. Um, it's ever so good for um, sort of reaming out where the nozzles are. What else do I have? I have a cap there. That cap is for bubbling back it's a way of mixing paint it's a way of just dislodging anything that's dried whilst you're actually using the airbrush uh, you can do it if your um, air cap allows you to sort of hold it um, and sort of stop the airflow it will bubble back and that's quite a good thing to do um, I'm not too sure whether it's just my make of airbrush um, or whether others do them. This handy little tool. There's a grub screw um, and it's in this body of the airbrush. It's about halfway down and when you, if, if you didn't know, you wouldn't do anything about it. But there's basically there's a grub screw in there to undo and there's a tiny washer. A little seal and that's your needle seal so if you haven't got a good seal around your needle what will happen is that if paint does start to work its way or stain work its way back you'll end up with it coming up here and affecting the needle uh, the um, lever and the air body so it's it's a way of stopping that happening so this tool is just a handy way of undoing that grub screw and pulling out with the seal so that's quite a handy one to have this one is a nozzle reamer so it's fine enough that it will go right through to the very tip of a 0.2 mil nozzle um, but it's wide enough and it just sort of scrapes around and gets rid of all the crud that sort of accumulates and dries on so that's another very handy little tool so that's that and I just I always keep in some seals so I've got various seals um, they're in there with the nozzle but there's various seals there and uh, they're all for different parts so some of these those two are for the air body and these ones are for the um, needle seal and then these ones here are nozzle seals so sometimes you find they're interchangeable depends on your airbrush um, if you're buying a, a cheap generic one say sort of 20 30 pound um, you, you might find that there's some generic seals that will fit it uh, each brand of airbrush 
and each model of airbrush will require different types of nozzle uh, types of seal or um, will they'll only use their own seals um, you have to be careful with the solvents that you use because not all seals are able to cope so these black rubber ones wouldn't cope with a harsh solvent so I wouldn't I wouldn't put a, a spirit say a surgical spirit or rubbing spirit near those um, the PTFE ones are supposed to be more hardy against solvents um, but I still err on the side of caution you don't want to go too harsh uh, other things that you can buy you can buy um, nozzles I did actually change the nozzle on my 0 0.2 because I was experiencing some um, issues with I wasn't getting consistent airflow um, sort of the paint wasn't coming out consistently and also the um, it was bubbling back even though I've cleaned it and serviced it it was still doing it and the only thing left to do was then change the nozzle so I've done that so this is a brass nozzle and uh, but I'll show you it in the airbrush anyway so the other thing you'll need is airbrush cleaner of some description they're all much of a muchness really and uh, I, I say we put stains and acrylics so this one's really good for acrylic paints um, and then I use some surgical spirit as well just a little bit it I only use this though on anything that hasn't got a seal on it um, so if it has got a seal I try and remove it and I don't use it don't tend to use it so much on brass um, but that's all really uh, if your airbrush is plated I'd be careful um, some airbrushes are plated uh, some airbrushes are nickel this one is nickel so uh, just to or some of the um, sort of top end airbrushes they're now plating them so that if you've got a nickel allergy uh, you're not affected so you can see here where well, let me just get those out actually these are these are washers that I've changed already so breaking down an airbrush first things first take your air cup or if you're siphon fed your bottle off if you're siphon fed you've probably got washers around the top nozzle of the bottle so just be careful when uh, again when applying any solvents next thing to do take the body off and then I take the that's the uh, needle um, that holds the needle in place what I call it now next thing to do take the air cap off when I take my air cap off the nozzle will come with it some uh, airbrushes that nozzle is fitted separately and screws into the body uh, some of you might need a little um, spanner to do this with so some of you will have uh, one piece air caps and will be two so this is just all according next thing i do is push through from the back and i push my needle out so it comes out the back uh, the front just be careful when you're pulling forward that you don't jab your needle on anything next thing to do is take the chuck nut off needle nut that's the word i was looking for so that's your needle nut that's your chuck nut there is a spring just be careful you don't lose it personal experience of that one so that is your chuck and that controls pulling your needle backwards and forwards so that makes it spring back then there is your lever they're usually two part well, sometimes that bit though will be separate piece so that 
would be something to look out for. And I'm just going to get my special little tool out and I'll show you the locking nut that is inside your airbrush. So that just goes in. As far as it can, you'll feel it click. And out it comes on the end of your little needle. And you'll see there, there's a the seal, it's a PTFE seal, and there's the, your little brass unit. So that airbrush now is almost complete. So I'm just going to take off the coupling to the quick release coupling. Now I think this one is a bit tight, so I'm just going to put a rubber glove around there, get my pliers, gently go round just to loosen that. Once it's loose, it will come off with your fingers. And this is your air body. You'll see at the top there, there's another little washer, PTFE washer. And this is the button that when you push down to get your air on a, on a, on your, on your, um, trigger, that's the piece that pushes down and releases the air. So we'll look at that separately in a minute. So at this stage, so this is a, is for a full service. If I wasn't doing a full service, I would leave that air air and body on and I wouldn't touch it it would be perfectly fine to then clean um, in your airbrush so that would be that I'm just looking here and just seeing whether I can improve the cleaning on it but I might just do a little bit actually so that now has no washers in it so I know that it's perfectly safe for me to clean. And I'm going to put it in some surgical spirit. Um, it's the only real bit that I think is actually quite deserving of some, some cleaning. I'll just leave that in there for the minute when you take your airbrush apart though it's always worth just checking and making sure that everything is in good order when you're cleaning a needle I'll just um, show you um, I would actually get some um, spirit just on the tissue and I wipe it from back to front just gently pulling it through Whatever you do, don't go front to back. Point one, it's a bit dangerous. These are like mini javelins. You really don't want one going through your finger. That is sharp. And you won't even notice that it's gone in. So back to front. Feel with your fingers and you'll feel if there's any um, film build up from spirit stains. Um, or any other stain um, if you've got calluses on your on your fingers just use your little finger the inside of your little finger is actually quite delicate and you will feel anything on there now that's quite smooth there's nothing on there I'm just checking it's um, nice and sharp there's no bends so that's ready to go The other thing to check is your nozzle. My nozzle say it's supposed to come out with the air cap. Um, you've got your PTFE seal there. That will just come off with your fingernail. I'm not going to do it now. Um, I've had it on and off a few times. I don't really want to waste them. Um, and you've got a choice and you can either use your nozzle reamer I'll just get that out or say so I do use um, it's an old 0.2 
needle. So just get that out. Plonk that in. It's fine enough it comes out of the end. I don't know whether you can see that. And just very carefully don't push, don't force anything. Shouldn't need to force anything and that will just clean out drag out anything that's in there say so ordinarily if your seal is looking a bit squashed um, or it has gone out of shape it is worth changing it and just change it for the appropriate one to your brand or your your make or model just drop that back in now ordinarily again I would pop the uh, air cap into soak because you will get build up around the tip there and in inside so it's always worth uh, giving that a soak this one however if if I soaked it I would take off there is a rubber seal and I would take that off um, unless I was just going to soak it in some airbrush cleaner um, that would be safer but I'm just going to drop that nozzle back in there it is a bit strange on this one that PTFE on the nozzle but it's just got rubber on there, but hey ho. So, get that matter clean. Um, paint really shouldn't come back towards the rear of your paintbrush. If it has, then you should check the seals. And uh, but on occasion, you may get something that will, you know, it might might be a spillage. Say, so just make sure that. Um, your uh, controller is is clean so your needle goes through that so it does need to be clean things that should be fine are your needle nut That's all okay. Uh, that nut's okay. So yeah, chuck, chuck, and your chuck nut should be fine. You may occasionally get a bit of paint in here. It's just travelling up the needle, really. So just check, and you're just checking to make sure that everything is how it should be. That should be okay, that should be okay. So let me just put my reamer up away. Let's just have a look at this, see how this is cooking. So so you just use the brushes, just give it all a good clean through. So try and stay try and use the largest brush you can to get good clean tissue is also a good thing you know you can make bring it in there with the brush sometimes that's what you need to do so whatever means to clean your brush do it okay i'm just gonna wipe that down and the nice thing about surgical spirit is it evaporates off so it should be okay so now before i go any further i'm going to put this back in just so that i know it's um it's all done Give that a clean here. Okay, right. 
So thread that on there with the seal. Pop that in there. And you just turn it until it's finger tight. That's in. Okay. Next thing to do. Right, I was just checking to make sure you were still filming. I got caught out like that before. Right. So, the next thing to do, we do actually want to just check this air body. So, we've got a washer here, rubber rubber washer, we've got a PTFE washer, and then in here at the bottom, I just can't see it there, but I'll see. Okay. PTFE. And draw that round. And this is when springs and things start appearing. So there's another spring in here. Again, be careful. And then you want to just So, we have a brass bar in there. Now, there shouldn't be any paint on that, but there is a little bit. So, I've obviously had an issue somewhere. And I'm just checking, making sure that that rubber is fine. It's still movable, it's still malleable. So that's good. Now this is your basically your controller that controls your air when you push down. So as I say there is PTFE seal there as well. Now I know that one's okay. Just feed that through. Good. And there is what you can do is you can pop that on there. You know that will be all in alignment. Just do it up. And we just want to check that the button still works at the top when you do that. So that's when you do a full service. And if I say about every 18 months, um, unless you're a really hard user on your, your airbrush you want to change those so that could go back in and I'm just going to put my coupling back on okay next thing the trigger and that just sits on top of that button again okay so just check and make sure everything's in place next thing to do put the chuck back in make sure that everything is in alignment you can look down where your trigger goes and you'll see everything click through make sure that your spring is attached and then put your chuck nut back on. Make sure you don't cross thread. So there you go. And that should snap 
snap up, snap back. Oops. So next thing I put on then, nozzle, air cap, that screws back in. And I put that back on before I do the needle because now everything should be in alignment. So next thing is my needle, Let's thread it through. There will be some resistance. There is new washer in there from earlier. So push it past the resistance until it comes through at the top. And you're literally pushing it until it registers. No more. And then you pop needle nut on, finger tight, and then your body. And then last thing I do is I just give it a quick rub over. Just carefully. that is how you take an airbrush apart how you look at it all how you clean it and then you put it back together again and that is all ready to go so i hope that's been of use and uh, do leave any comments if you've got any questions i'll try and get back to you but that is how i deal with my airbrushes so thank you very much for watching please like subscribe ding that bell and uh, we'll see you next time but thank you for now